Just making a quick little video on how to tear apart a Asus Chromebox CN60. And other people have tore these down, but I'm going to take it a little bit further than they have for demonstration purposes. Under the four rubber feet, you'll see the primary case screws. And then you just dump those out. I found the easiest way to get this open is you'll take your screwdriver, stick it in one of the holes, and just kind of gently pull on it diagonally, which will give you enough of the thing to pop out where you can kind of move along. And this is being a little stubborn, there we go. So that's just the bottom there. And there'll be two more screws on the back side of the motherboard here that are holding in the board. Now to remove the motherboard, you're obviously going to want to disconnect these antenna cables and power button cables. But also there's this little piece of plastic here, which I'm going to zoom into. And if you don't take this out, it's going to get in the way of the card reader board. And it's also going to make it difficult to put the motherboard back in. So there's a little tab, which will be right in front of my screwdrivers. You'll see it on your unit. You just kind of push down on that and sideways. Probably shouldn't do that with a screwdriver like I just did. I'd recommend doing it with your finger. <laughs> but uh, this is dead, so I can't really damage it much. Um, but then once you kind of push it sideways, it comes straight out. You see there's a little locking tab there. When you put it back in, you'll want to make sure those two little pins line up with the little slots that are cut into the housing. From there, I will zoom back out. You want to be careful where you grab this. I find that if I kind of pry up on the wireless card under my finger, that's a good spot. And then also the RAM slot. And they're a little stubborn because there's um, a little raised bit for the screw points that kind of help the motherboard lock into place. So what you may have to do is pry up on the front plastic trim piece this a little bit if it doesn't want to come out right away and then once you get it out you have the whole computer in your hand here and here's the CMOS battery it's just a standard CR2032 with wires coming off it I don't know if anyone sells this specific battery on eBay or elsewhere but it's basically the uh, same type of battery you'll see in most laptops so if you're feeling creative, what you can do is just go buy one of the cheapest uh, laptop CMOS battery you can find with the pigtail on it. Cut this one closer to the battery, and on the other one, cut off just the connector and then splice them together. This also will give you access to the CPU fan if it gets dirty and you can't blow it out without taking it apart. And it's just held on with two screws. Oh, there it is. And since this is dead, I might as well tear it down all the way. Show you the CPU. This one's configured with a 4th gen i3 processor. It did previously have some DDR3 in it. But the previous owner took it, so it's gone forever. Um, here's the processor. It's an SR16Q. 4th Gen i3. This just board for the SD card slot. A little buzzer on it, apparently. And yeah, if you don't, if you don't take off that plastic trim piece I took off earlier, let me get this back on. What you'll run into is this will impede your ability to put the motherboard back in because this board won't be all clear and what you end up doing is you'll end up tweaking it so it'll come loose kind of like that at an angle so if your SD card doesn't work after you took the motherboard completely out that's probably why 
But, uh, yeah. Um, generally speaking, though, all you should have to do is pull off the bottom cover to access the memory, SSD, and wireless card. Really not much to need service on this end, unless your CMOS battery dies. So, hopefully that's interesting, and thanks for watching.